1-3 is what we're dealing with. But is there an appeal process in here? There must be. It's just how to, how to uh, what did you think go through it. Appeal procedures, 421. Oh, 421. That's all right. Upon receiving a notice of appeal, the hold a public hearing. Reject the appeal without a hearing and render a decision. So I guess we're holding a public hearing. Yes. So. I guess we'll just take testimony from I think it's all, all the parties do. and if it's anybody interested. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, this is the regular scheduled meeting of the Development Review Board, August 6, 2019. We have one item on the agenda. It is um, application 19-031, which is an appeal of the Zoning Administrator's decision. Uh, per Section 5401 by Susan Brito. 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 Um, so the applicant is appealing the zoning administrator's decision that an outdoor light fixture on a single family residential property at 1609 Hill Street Extension was exempt from Town of Berlin land use and development regulations. And we have received written um, information, uh, but at this point, uh, we will take testimony, but first we need to swear everybody in. So anybody that intends to give testimony, raise your right hand. And if you're if you're a party, um, do you swear to tell the truth about the matters before this board under penalty of perjury? I do. Okay. Um, so I guess we would first hear from. You want to go through the, all the room and see who the oh, party oh, folks right. are. So, um, but is there a? Would we have party status to this, or just? Sorry for the I confusion. Was... We've never done one of these before. I wonder if I pull this chair back from on. Oh, sure, sure, absolutely. Um, yes. So, sure. We haven't done it before either. When was this the first? When did that take place? The first complaint. It's an appeal, right? So it's appeal. It's, a, it's simply an appeal from a zoning administrator's decision. Oh, so okay. he he basically deemed the light in compliance okay. with the regulations, and the so uh, Susan's appealing that decision before the DRB, which is the process laid out in the develop in the zoning regulations. Yeah. Um, so the appeal would go to us to to hear and decide. And 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 I just do want to note that our decisions in any um, application. Really are guided by what the rule, what the what the regulations say. So, it's it's. I mean, obviously sometimes there's ambiguity, but the, we try to write them with as little ambiguity as possible, and we try to be able to just follow the regulations. Um, so, I guess if people want to introduce themselves, I, I'm not sure there's a party status, but just by virtue of you being here and having signed in, you're there's it's on record that you're here. So, if you if everybody wants to introduce themselves, um, I'm side grid on plaintiffs. Son. Okay. I'm Joey Kewer, Jacqueline's daughter. Okay. Andy Adams, Jackie's son. Jackie Adams. Hi. Okay. So, oh, I'm sorry. I would be Chris Bradley, the applicant, significant okay. other of Susan okay. Bitto. <laughs> okay. I'll be doing most of the testimony. Today. Okay, perfect. So I think we would start with your testimony. Uh, very good. I, I forwarded two copies according to your procedures for filing an appeal. I do not know if you've seen this document. Yes. Have a chance to review. Yes, we have. I think, for simplicity's sake, I'll read it aloud for the good for some portions of it. If I can. I'll start on page two. Uh, the zoning administrator's decision. On May 16th, Berlin Zoning Administrator Tom Badowski issued a denial via email wherein he gave his decision that a newly installed street light is exempt from Berlin zoning due to section 1101.A uh, subsection 8. That section states, quote, except within the flood hazard overlay district, see section 2202, a zoning permit is not required for 
Um, and we now jump down to subsection eight. An outdoor light fixture on a single or two family resident property with initial output of not more than 3,000 lumens that is downward directed and fully shielded to prevent glare or light trespass off the property. Uh, Mr. Badowski's email denial was written as a forward from another email uh, Mr. Badowski received from a certain Zach Casey, who is a re representative of GMP, and you can see that as attachment number one to uh, this uh, document. In the forwarded portion of the email from Green Mountain Power, Mr. Casey states that it is his G slash Green Mountain Power's opinion that the street light in question does conform to Berlin's lighting ordinance because it is 2,574 lumens, it is pointed downward, it is fully shielded, and it meets national standards of dark sky compliance. As a result, it is my opinion that there is appearance that Mr. Badowski rendered his decision almost solely on the word of Green Mountain Power Representative Mr. Casey that it was in compliance, although we believe we understand that in the four-hour interim between receiving the email from Green Mountain Power and Mr. Badowski rendering his decision, uh, he also spoke to a technician at Cree. Uh, page three, uh, the statement of disagreement with Mr. Badowski's decision. We feel that uh, Mr. D uh, Badowski erred in his decision that this newly installed street light is exempt from Berlin zoning 1101.a subsection eight because this light is not, quote, fully shielded to prevent glare or light trespass off the property. We understand and do not dispute that Cree, Green Mountain Power, and even the International Dark Sky Association, the IDA, have all indicated that the light is, quote, fully shielded. As referenced by all three entities, however, fully shielded means a fixture that allows no emission above a horizontal plane through the fixture. That's the IDA definition. Uh, Berlin also has a definition that is quite similar. You can refer to it in the glossary section of the um, your zoning uh, uh, document. Per the Berlin zoning, you have a de definition of glare. Glare is defined as, quote, light entering the eye directly from a light source or indirectly from reflective surfaces that cause visual discomfort or reduced visibility. Per, per Berlin zoning, you also have a definition of light trespass, which is defined as, quote, light that falls beyond the property is it, it is meant to eliminate. In order to prevent, and I underline prevent because that is your wording at the end of section 1101A subsection 8, and I'll refer to that fully shielded to prevent glare, not mitigate, not lessen, prevent. In order to prevent glare and light trespass, Responsible companies like Cree manufacture accessory shields, which are specifically designed to mitigate these issues. While a street light can be referenced by the industry term fully shielded, which essentially means it does not light the sky, the light emitted by one of these street lights from the horizontal on down must have one or more light control accessory shields installed to prevent glare and light trespass from <coughs> specific viewpoints. To underscore the point that Berlin Zoning Administrator may have erred in his making his determination, we contacted the IDA, specifically Pete Strasser, who is the technical director of IDA, about the use of the term fully shielded. Mr. Strasser replied via email, and we fully believe that his statement will remove any and all doubt that Mr. Badowski erred in his determination that the street light was exempt. I'd like to read from that if I could, that is an attachment. I believe number two. Hello, Pete Strasser here. Thank you for your note. This is quite frustrating to hear. The term, quote, fully shielded has been used in the lighting industry for decades and is synonymous for another term called, quote, full cut off, end quote. This has a very clear meaning in that no light is emitted above 90 degrees, eliminating all light distribution above the horizontal plane. This is the one of the critical criteria for IDA approval. Some manufacturers, certainly not all, are aware of the need of additional trespass control and provide for, optional, for an optional trespass shield in situations where it is requested. 
The Cree RSW model is such a model. In such situations, the jurisdiction is contacted and the appropriate shields are installed to end the trespass problem. This is how it is done in Tucson. Lights go in, complaints are noted, and shields are installed. Some places the fixture can be a problem, some places not, which is the whole point of offering additional trespass control where needed. Your jurisdiction is grossly misinformed on the, op on the functional options and capabilities of their selected product. To equate, quote, fully shielded with, quote, includes all optional trespass control mitigating options, end quote, is simply not the case. Uh, he then goes on to say he has a good working relationship uh, with Cree, um, and, and he intends to get in touch with Cree and, and have that discussion regarding fully shielded. Um, um, <laughs> I'd be happy to contact either the gentlemen at Cree and have them get in touch with those who are misunderstanding the notion of what fully shielded means, how it pertains to the product, and how to op optimally configure the light fixtures in location where additional trespass control is warranted. As an interesting side note here, when we first contacted Green Mountain Power concerning the installation of that new light, uh, Green Mountain Power maintained there were no shields for this light whatsoever. Uh, I then pursued and asked for a copy of their uh, spec sheet for the light that was installed. Uh, that was attachment zero. I'd like to refer to a couple of things on that. Page one. Um, the Cree RSW series using WaveMax technology will transform the way utilities and municipalities light their residential streets. This is not a security light. This is a street light installed in a yard. Interestingly enough, Green Mountain Power, when we contacted them, agreed of their own will to attempt to mitigate the light issue. Um, they did so by first installing what is called a cul-de-sac shield. A cul-de-sac shield uh, screens both sides and the back. There's also a separate back shield installed that can be installed, and there's also an optional front shield that can be installed. In, in, while I have not been on the Adams property, from my visual, it, it, it does not appear to be perpendicular to Hill Street Extension. It seems to be on a slight angle. So unfortunately, when they installed the cul-de-sac shield, it still left uh, light being seen. This is a picture. If you'd circulate that, please. Um, uh, upside down, I'm sorry, Mr. Pitsu. Um, that bright, glaring light that's to the top left of the house and the two lights uh, on the house itself are, are two optional floodlights, which at this point are pointed directly at. Um, and uh, and they're pointed at my house and they're on most is nights, it? the floodlights. Mm -hmm. Just want to make that point. So, is this photo included in your, in your testimony? Um, you're taking testimony. I can certainly provide photos. And uh, I understand all, actually that uh, as a result of this, if I read your administrative rules and procedure, <coughs> uh, I would expect a site or Possibly. one of your options is to have a site visit. Um, do you want to mark this as an exhibit? That's a good question. Um, that would be fine. We'll, just, we'll take it as okay. part of the testimony. Um, and, and just as a, an aside here, um, Mr. Badowski rendered his decision without ever doing the site visit. I, it, it, I'm, he, he rendered his decision. I then spoke to Mr. Badowski. Do you really want to do this? Would you like to come up and actually take a look? He did so. He did so before, and I mentioned it. Well, let me continue on with my testimony. Forgive me for getting out of here. So, uh, finishing up on the. Um, disagreement. Uh, per Mr. Badowski, the property at 1699 Hill Street Extension is below, this would be Susie's property, is below the horizontal plane. So we are definitely below the 90 degrees. So we are susceptible to, it's not, we're not above, we are below. Therefore, both glare and light tras trespass are evident from 1699 Hill Street Extension, and therefore simple logic indicates that 1101A8 cannot apply. It appears in rendering, rendering his decision, and if we look back at uh, Zach Casey's statement, Zach, Mr. Casey indicates that it is, quote, fully shielded. 
and completely ignores the trailing clause that basically says, or that states unequivocally, fully shielded to prevent glare or trespass, light trespass off the property. Um, we see, instead of uh, his decision, um, we see the applicable zoning sections uh, as being 3004A, B, and C. I quote from 3004A, B, and C. A reads, quote, all outdoor lighting not exempted under Chapter 110, which is what we just, I maintain, does not exempt that light, or regulated under Chapter 320, I'm sorry, but Chapter 320 is a new, uh, a whole new uh, installation, must be designed, installed, and operated in accordance with the provisions of this section. Section 3004B reads, quote, shielding. All outdoor light fixtures must be fully or partially shielded. Section 3004C reads, total output. Outdoor, outdoor lighting must not cause glare or light trespass off the property. That is the operative section that we need to be looking at in considering this situation. Based on the above, in order to be exempt from Berlin zoning, the newly installed streetlight must have light control accessory shields installed so that they can, must not cause glare or light trespass off the property. Uh, in our relief, um, and, and perhaps I should have prefaced all of this, I, I'm sorry it had to come to this. I really am. Across the, since Susie has moved into the property, I believe there's been a total of four uh, attempted contacts with the Adams. Uh, the first uh, contact was between Susie and Mrs. Adams. Mrs. Adams referred the conversation to Mr. And Andy, Andrew Adams. Um, it was a rather brusque conversation. Um, he was not, we, we volunteered to install a shield on the light to help mitigate this issue. Um, it was rebuffed. Uh, since then, there have been a three additional calls, uh, two on the same day, one approximately a week and a half later, all during regular business hours, normal business hours, where Susie noted that the uh, two lights, floodlights that you can see, and if we go up there right now, you can see them being on and pointed directly at Susie's house as being uh, on during the day and as a good neighbor, they might not have realized the lights were on, therefore wasting electricity. I'm frugal with my electricity and that there was no, we, we only left phone, Susie only left phone messages. That resulted in a harassment visit or call to the police department where we were charged or it was suggested that we were harassing them. I, I would suggest that three calls over three weeks to be a gentle reminder that their light was on during the day, which is not even really affecting us. I, I want to keep this at the appeal and not at the personal Okay, that's fine. Involved. All right, um, that is absolutely fine. Um, we, we simply request Green Mountain Power went down the avenue of installing the cul-de-sac shield. Um, I, I believe I understand that Green Mountain Power was requested by the Adams to remove that shield because it was somehow impacting the light on their property. Um, they ended up um, installing a backlight shield on that light, which is, interestingly enough, the standard configuration for that light when it's used for its intended purpose as a street light. Because as a street light, you have the light hanging over the road, and you probably have a house behind it, so you shield that house from that light. Um, so apparently, that backlight shield was installed the only purpose of which could be to shield light from going on the back side of the Adams property, but apparently that was okay. So the relief we ask, cul-de-sac shield, I don't care what happens on the other side. We don't care what happens on the other side, which I'm, I'm not even sure who that neighbor is, to be honest with you. A front shield and a side shield that as long as it's mitigated, fine, light up their property however they would like to. Uh, it's not that we object to them having security or sense of peace of mind. But when light is meeting your defi definitions approved by your voters on March 5th, and I think this document was created by this board, there was a reason you used and defined the term glare. There was a reason you used the 
term light trespass and defined it. It meets this criteria. So, um, interesting related facts if you're interested. Um, uh, let me see. No, I think uh, I've mentioned the, 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 the salient points. We, we, we would respectfully request, number one, that uh, shields be installed. We're not demanding that the, the light get removed. Uh, we're, they are entitled to a sense of security, but not to have such light shining on adjacent property. In fact, one full lot away, such that in a rural designated area, you can't even enjoy the night sky. When you go out into the side yard or the backyard, you, you, can, you have a shadow. That's not really the rural nature that I, that is, I think you intended, which is why you defi define lighting ordinances. I think... Uh, that light specifically is mm -hmm. like uh, looking at an LED, you know the bright LED lights? Well, it's exposed from where I step out onto my back deck. So it immediately hits you in the eyes. And I have not enjoyed one night at my property, not one. I'm embarrassed to have people come over to my property at night because I'm embarrassed to be bathed and light. I moved to a rural area from Barrie, and I expected to have a rural setting. I never had to have curtains at my house in Barrie, and now I have to have blackout curtains and additional things over my windows <laughs> to mitigate light coming into my bedrooms. It's, it's terrible. Is it, is it permissible for me to ask the zoning administrator to ask you a question? Can I just ask you a question? Do you live there also? Are you a property owner? Or are you just a... Well, I, I'm the applicant which qualifies me to, to write this. You're not a resident. I am not a resident. I'm a resident of Northfield, Vermont. Is there a time limit? Because I have to work tomorrow. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just have a question about the zoning ordinance. Um, you said that you're going to be there for so long. <laughs> I think we just want to hear, make sure we hear all the information that's relevant to the appeal. Um, so is, is that, that's pretty much. That's Unless you have any questions. We'd be uh, first, first, I don't know, do you have, does anybody here want to ask questions? Can I just ask, like, could you define glare? Because, you know, the neighbors that have been there for the past, past 45 years and never have been of glare, so maybe just people that are sensitive. But I can't imagine. Barry this City is a whole different Susan light. Please. Barry City on Vernon Street, I'm pretty sure, has a little more glare. Oh no! And all the neighbors that live there are all—they never complain about the light, and they actually say that they enjoy the light when they walk in the evening. It helps them sleep. Yeah. But all the so, crime that's so taking place hold on. there. I want to. Um, glare is defined. It means light entering the eye directly from a light source or indirectly from reflective surfaces that cause visual discomfort or reduced visibility. It's defined in this, that's how it's defined in the zoning regulations. Mm -hmm. So other people, so your advice may give more sense to So I think at this point, um, I want to hear, oh, do you have a question? I think we should have one with you. You're calling Blair? Okay, fine. Please, please. 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 Nobody else is talking about it. And you haven't just complained about their neighbors also. Maybe, hold on, hold on, hold on. How long have you owned the property? property. When did you apply? I, I moved in September 18th, 2015. September 15th, 2018. No, 2015. September 18th, 2015. 15. So it's okay. been almost four years. Okay. All right. And we understand the light has existed, a, a previous version of that light has existed since 1974. However, uh, it's my understanding that uh, if I have a house, and I want to rebuild that house, exactly the same house. I first have to obtain a zoning permit to raz, raise the existing house. I then need to obtain a, zone, a zoning permit to rebuild the exact same house. So when that new light, when Green Mountain Power installed that new light, that was a completely new light. That was not the same light. It's a new fixture. It's a new bulb. It, it, this is why. So when was it installed? March, um, I think. Um, I can tell you that because Green Mountain Power uh, heard that the mercury vapor light that was previously there and had been there since 1974 um, 
was leaking mercury and March was, 4th, 2019. was deemed um, toxic by the EPA and they were told they had to take all of them out and upgrade to so LEDs. So it was March 4th? March 4th, 2019. How many other neighbors have you complained about that, about their lights? I know we're not the only one. I, I don't know. Have you haven't complained about any of them? Oh, yes. Yeah, about the dogs, 970 Stuart Road. You complained about Joe Perry. Uh, no, we right. are complaining about yeah. Stuart Road. Okay, okay, this is out of control. I'm not going to, I'll it's stop really the hearing. The I'll let you guys, I want to hear from the zoning administrator, and then we'll hear from people in the audience. So I think I sent you all my position paper here. Um, page page two is Vermont statutes and, and everything here that has been highlighted in yellow eyes, I've added that by my right. Um, and under state statutes for appointments to the power of administrative officers, I just want to point out that the administrator officer shall administer zoning bylaws, literally. I don't have the ability to you know, no you know, it's white, it's black and white, it's not gray. I have, I don't have discretion to do it. So, so, um, so uh, Ms. Bradley's correct. On May 16th, I spoke to Zach Casey from Green Mountain Power. He, and I think I forwarded a copy of his, uh, he's the operations manager. Um, uh, Ms. Bradley called me before before about this new light. Uh, they had an issue in the past uh, with the light because it was uh, not in our zoning regulations then. Uh, and it was uh, uh, deemed that it was a new light, so then it would fall under the purview of our new zoning regulations. You may recall that the zoning regulations didn't get adopted till town meeting in March, but we were operating under two sets of regulations. So we were actually, so they were in effect when the new light went in. And, and Mr. Casey from Green Mountain um, confirmed that. So uh, I, I, I read to uh, Mr. Casey our uh, zoning regulations, um, uh, 1101A8, uh, and this is for an exemption of a residential light. And I'll read it again. Mr. Bradley did read it. I'll read it again. An outdoor light fixture on a single or two-family residential property with initial output of not more than 3,000 lumens that is downward directed and fully shielded to prevent glare and light trespass off the property is an exempt structure. So I talked to Mr. Casey about that and uh, he, he sent some documents, I, I have it in there. And <clears throat> the, the shield that, uh, the light that they put in, uh, if, you, if you're packet, it's one that next to the right, the red arrow here, uh, 254, of 2547 that's the that's the amount of lumens that the light it's a it's, it is a street light that they tone down for residential purposes um, and so it, it met the first criteria of less than 3,000 uh, uh, lumens so we, we talked about was it direct directed downward it's directed downward um, <clears throat> are we supposed to have uh, Ms. Bradley mentioned that there was a um, an order from the from the uh, family here uh, uh, that Officer Dan Withrow from our Berlin Police visited the property, um, <clears throat> and Mr. Withrow told me, and I was hoping he'd be here to testify to the fact that all the lights on the property are pointing downward. Right? Now, I was going to ask him to have his testimony, but um, <clears throat> and. So that would be here. So the, the third, the third oh, item. Quasi judicial. The third, uh, the third, third item um, uh, is fully shielded. So fully shielded is is new to us with our regulations. Um, and if you go back back to uh, fully shielded, they talk about uh, a dark sky uh, uh, compat uh, compatible. So uh, <clears throat> Mr. Bradley mentioned a Pete Strasser. I, I had the good fortune of speaking to Pete Strasser probably several days before, before uh, Mr. Bradley did, and, and I shared that. It's, it's page 11 here, uh, and I will read what I wrote to, to Mr. Strasser. Mr. Strasser, he is the technical director of the International Dark Sky Association. It's because it's it's funny. <clears throat> uh, let me um, let me back up just a little bit. The if you go to and it's on page 10. Um, 
page 10 of my, uh, this is the fixture seal of approval from the IDA, the, the International Dark Sky Association, <clears throat> and they talk about shielding. And uh, luminaries shall be fully shielded, emitting no light above 90 degrees with, um, and go on, and, 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 and they have a note here then at the bottom. For street and area lights, submittal should identify optional uh, backlight uh, shields and forward cul-de-sac shields. They're optional. And so I, I, I contacted Mr. Uh, Strasser and, and I'll, I'll just read you uh, what, I, what I wrote to him. <clears throat> I said, I'm the zoning administrator for the town of Berlin, Vermont. Um, I have recently, we have recently adopted new zoning regulations that tries to be dark sky friendly. Our regulations state <clears throat> that a resident does not need a zoning permit for a light fixture if on a two, on a, on a single or two family residential property with an initial output of not more than 3,000 lumens that is downward directed and is fully shielded to prevent glare or light trespass off the property. <clears throat> I have a case where a local utility company installed a Cree or SW311 fixtures and contends these meet dark sky parameters. The question I have for you is that this model comes with back shields and call it a sack shield. Do either or both of these shields need to be installed to be considered fully shielded or are these optional in addition shielding? Thank you for your time in this matter. He responded, hello, Pete here. Sorry for the delay as I'm but on the road. The Cree product meets our certification in that is, it is <clears throat> 3,000 lumens and has no light directed downward above 90 degrees. This is the fundamental criteria for certification. The aftermarket shields can be put in place if the light from the fixture is directed in an area that is not desired. They are not intended for them to meet the no light mandate, but it is an option to be deemed useful in specific applications to limit light in certain directions. I believe the Adams family um, and they can they can speak to this them, themselves when uh, they when the um, cul-de-sac shield was put on the, the light they weren't getting the light on the property where they wanted uh, they'll, they'll, I, I think they'll may testify to that but um, so the again the shields are are optional items not deemed necessary to be dark sky approved um, so the final thing that uh, that that I uh, give, I I I, I, I put a, a map here, at, and it was page 13. <clears throat> this light is approximately 355 feet um, from the source to the edge of of uh, Susan's property, and it's probably another 30 feet to her house. Um, it's a significant distance away uh, from from her from her house. So. Uh, all things you there. Just proved the point right there. It's illuminating all the way. It's Sorry, it's not illuminating. You'll have a chance to speak. Let him finish. And, and, and so uh, again, um, I made the decision based on on um, the information that I got from from uh, Green Mountain Power, who who are experts in the lighting field. I, I'm not an expert in the lighting business, so. Opportunity to rebut. Somebody else I, I, I think we need to hear Yes, from at the end of the hearing, according to the procedures. Somebody who's a proponent for zoning, there's no surprise that you lost as a Republican. There's, um, we always ask so for comments. So shots are exactly what we've been Well, can we have yeah. the floor tonight, too? Your, your, your mom is okay, harassing okay, my 81-year-old mother. Okay, we're going to stop Get taking testimony life. if this is going to continue. I, I, I can't do this. I'm sorry. I'm I really don't, don't need this over yeah. uh, zoning decision. Gotcha. This is personal. Maybe you need to go to civil court, but you're not going to do it here. No, absolutely. So, so I will hear from the family. So I just like to say that um, we've spoken to Green Mountain Power, and my mom did not ask for the shield, so the person there said that somebody called impersonating her, suggesting they were her, no. and that's only done through <laughs> No, so, she's, the, she's part of the family. Then you ought to get up here. Why don't you come sit up here if you're going to talk. Are you going to speak for the family, for the Adams family? Go, Mom, let my brother go ahead. Okay, so why don't you so, uh, sit there. Why don't you guys stay with the standard wide The seat. shield was added to my mom's light fixture. Uh, uh, your name, I'm sorry. Andrew Adams. Andrew Adams. And I called Green Mountain Power to ask why, and they said that the neighbor had requested that the shield be added, and I said... 
is that something that neighbors make a request for? I said, that's my mom's light. She pays for it. And they said, you're right. And the lady looked it up. She said, you're right. Your mother does pay for it. She said, uh, if that's something that your mother doesn't want, then we can take it down. I said, yes, please take it down. It illuminates um, near where the basketball hoop is and in the area between our house and the neighbor's house. He's never had a complaint about it before. Um, and then, um, so they, they took the shield down and I'm trying to think about, um, lost my train of thought there, sorry. That's all right. <laughs> so Go long sorry. story short, there's, there's been, since Sue has moved in, there's been multiple calls to my mother messages as um, Mr. Bradley has said. Very rude messages. Mrs. Adams, do you have so much money that you can afford to leave your light on all day? It was during the daytime. Oh, I was gone for the day. You were gone for the day, correct. It is a motion light. Um, my, parent, my mom's been there 43 years. She's 81 years old. It takes a serious lack of character to harass somebody as much as these people have. Um, is so how long is the light? The light was originally put up when? You don't, you don't. The light's been there for, for as long and, as we And was ever. it put up at your request, or is it something that Green Mountain Power, I don't know why this is relevant, but I'm just curious what I, the purpose of the light was. It got changed in March because Green Mountain Power has a corporate policy to, to change these old high energy use lights to lower um, uh, more energy efficient structures. I get. I understand that. I guess I'm just not understanding why that's a Green Mountain. I've never no, I've seen this situation before, where the Green Mountain Power has a security light on a piece of property. So I'm just trying to figure out how that. Yeah, it's a pretty common service it that is? they offer. Oh, yeah, I didn't know it's pretty that. Common. Yeah, the lady at the bottom the of the hill on Stewart Road <laughs> at 970 Stewart Road, she has one. There's some as you go up through Hill Street Extension. Okay. There. My understanding from that lady was that there were some complaints about her light as well. There was complaints about um, Joe Morse's tractor being started too early in the morning. So. Okay, so yeah, let's we'll stick to the. Um, so, is there any? I have some questions. Yes, go ahead, Josh. So, how long has your mother owned the property? Forty-three years, I believe. Forty-three years. About that, yeah. And, and we we hear that there was a light there starting in what 1974. Is that the number I heard? So, mm -hmm. so as as that's about when your mother bought the property. She put a light I in. I believe so. I don't know. My my father probably would have been able to speak to that better. And um, what does the light, as it is right now, what does it illuminate on your property, on your mother's property? It illuminates. So looking at the road, it illuminates to the right of my mother's house, between her house and the neighbor Mike Scott. Okay, we don't have a we don't have a oh, well, sketch the, of the of the property. That picture, Actually, yeah, it's that on your time. packet there, Josh. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. okay. Yep. Right. So I'm looking, showing you the, the uh, photo that was attached to Tom's testimony. I think. Sure. So which is your which is your mother's so property? 1609 is right there. There's Hill Street Extension. Her light is right there. The light is right and this there. This is Mike Scott's house right here. And there's this big space in the trees right there. Right. He cut a bunch of the trees out. So he would see the light better than anybody else. I've had multiple conversations with him, and he doesn't mind the light at all. Right. He always. So the light, light's there. And how high is it off the ground? Do you know what the height of the pole is? I don't. Maybe, I, did, maybe these folks do. I don't I, know. I haven't been on your property. I have no idea. Oh, I thought you said it was I think it's 18 to 20 It's feet. above the level of the roof. And by the way, this is an entire line of cedars that exceed the height of the There is a hole cut there, though, now. Josh, so I think it's 18 to 20 feet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Last couple of years. So you so mentioned that. Uh, he just cut a tree last week. So, so it illuminates this area mm -hmm. <clears> right around here. Correct. And, and you said something about a basketball court? Is there a basketball well, there's court a basketball hoop like right here in the driveway. Oh, in the driveway? So it kind of illuminates down, like just underneath it, and probably that far right there. Yeah. Does your mother, does your mother play basketball? Yeah. She does? Good. <laughs> <laughs> At 81? Yeah. So we're getting around. I would just like to say also security and the, issues. That and there's no, there's no, uh, there's no, um, vegetation on this side of the property line. Correct. That field, I believe, is still owned by Dean Hoare. 
Okay. Um, so I that's a vacant field, basically. Correct. Yep. Yep. Okay. And there's no and vegetation. And there's no vegetation on this side. They planted trees. They planted. They have planted right. several trees in the tank yeah. to mitigate. Yeah. And as far as the effect on wildlife, when I mowed lawn, and my mom has seen them before, three or four deer often bed right on mom's lawn at night. How big is how big, how much acreage is that? What is it? About one acre. One acre. So yeah, because that side of the house is dark. <laughs> No, <laughs> you're saying that all the lights are toward your house. That's that wouldn't be the dark side. Would it? There's deer galore up okay. there. Are there any other so, Are there any other lights in this in this vicinity? Any other um, street lights? Not that I've taken. No street light on Hill Street no. extension. There's one. Um, Joe Morse and Lynn Parity have one up there. Yeah. Also, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Makes sense. So, so can I just ask? I know your 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 house does sit up on the hill. So when you so. If you if, when you go outside from your second level are you, on your deck, that's you're saying it's sort of straight across from you at that. Correct. That's it, outside my back door. That perm, picture right there. For Mr. Podowski. And this this is what I see usually every night. If I want to step mm -hmm. outside, I get not only the street light, which the LED light. I, I, I can believe the other neighbor across the, uh, on the other side of the trees doesn't have any light trespass because you can see that the light is oriented in such a way that it hits my house for the most part more than any other. If he would just, if the, Andy Adams would just come up my driveway and see that when I crest my driveway, that light is so intense, I have to put my Okay. My thing down. To, it, it's it blinds me. Bob Simons I lived there for years. Balsamelli, Mr. Balsamelli lived there for years. Kessler never had an issue with it. They use that same driveway. I get. I have another question. Okay. For um, the elevation. This the elevation of your mother's first floor or the basement or the ground level. Sure. Compared to the. Susan's house. Is it uphill, downhill, it's level? Down, it's downhill from her house. Yes, this this, your, this house property is downhill, is downhill from, from that. Do you not have any idea how much downhill it I is? Don't. Those are contours on there, John. Sure. Those are twenty foot contours here. Huh? <clears throat> so what's your so what's Tom? What's your estimation of the distance of downhill from here to? It, and I thought because if you have an eighteen foot, you know, yeah, light. I, I thought this was somewhere. But theirs was. 15 to 20 feet below this property. Okay. That was my guesstimate. Joey, I'm I just, I'm not sure if it was you or Mr. Bowie that um, said about the security, if the light provides security, is that correct? One of you read that in the Somebody definition. Asked. Yeah, they had asked because, yeah. Well, she is an 81-year-old single person living there, but also there's been break-ins uh, next to the new easels but twice, and now so, so it really is an issue of security. Right. The borns were broken into some years ago. A, uh, a person that was on heroin jumped on somebody's hood in front of my mom's house a couple of years ago. Another overdose just up the road, the guy that I went to high school with. So there's there's enough crime to expect that an 81-year-old woman might want some lights in her door here. As well as I think the police officer can testify to he was able to hear this message um, and it was not a friendly neighbor complaint during the day but calling her name and saying you're a polluter your lights are on it's sounding pretty hysterical and i think he'll testify to that as well so it's, it wasn't complaints just a fight it's during the day your lights are on why are your lights on and and i appreciate that there's a lot going on here but we can't take that into account when we make the decision right. i'm just saying i i understand what you're saying and i and i appreciate that there's obviously issues on both sides of this and i you know i feel sorry that you have to deal with this but we can't really yeah, consider right. that when we make our decision and, and that's what I, I live in california what they do there is they do put these shields around each light and it does illuminate straight down and when you look at this light that they have it is nice and bright it does illuminate their property very well if they if there was a shield towards our house that would just block that light coming to that direction, there would not be any block of that downward light because it would definitely uh, illuminate their driveway and all the way over to that uh, private road that runs in between yep. 
So it, it absolutely is a common sense thing. that well, That's all we want. I mean, it's not something, we don't want the, the security to be taken away. My mom wants security as well. She lives there by herself most of the time. So it's not like, you know, we don't, we don't want to take that away at all. It's just it's I common I sense. When you take into consideration the crime rate in California versus Vermont, it speaks well to maybe lighting being a good, being a good idea. Well, we have a lot so of does anybody have any more testimony relevant to the actual decision? I do, please. Uh, two things. Um, as a follow-up to uh, Mr. Zach Casey, um, I, I took Mr. Casey to task because it seemed to me that Mr. Badowski based his decision in a four-hour time window on exactly what Mr. Casey said. And I took him to task on the use of fully shielded and the industry term and how fully shielded is used. I asked him specifically, and I have an email that he gave me that I can submit his testimony. I asked him two questions. With only a back shield installed, leaving three slides of the light not shielded, do you slash GMP still maintain that the light is, quote, fully shielded? He responded, this light has a backlight shield that meets Green Mountain Power's current standards. So it has this optional backlight installed. We prefer to let the Berlin Zoning Board determine if it meets their ordinance, which is exactly 180 degrees from him previously saying, yes, it does meet. Um, we asked again, uh, and, and, and we have no problem. How many houses have a, a, a house lamp that has not got a shield around it instead of a bare bulb? None. I think it's a matter of just adjusting how far down the shield comes down so that the, the, your property can be adequately lit for security, but it is not going to come so that you can see the light. I mean, the question I was going to ask Mr. Badowski when he did his site visit was, could you see the light? Are you willing to answer that question, Mr. Badowski? I, I mean... Uh, the answer was yes. You can see the light he said he could to see the, the light. Berlin airport, too. Should we shut that all down? Or? Can I just ask so them all? If there are, just for you guys, I'm just wondering, like, since there have been and other complaints for previous neighbors living there, or anything I don't else, think it's fair to have this. Please let me see. Um, okay. I'm just please, wondering, please. is there something that you could install instead of imposing your wishes on the neighbors? Could you install something? Excuse me. Because that's what Green Mountain okay. Power okay. I'm not imposing any of This is your zoning. I, are gonna, you a Berlin resident? I'm gonna, I think did we're you vote for this? Yeah. Did you vote for this? Did, did you? Okay. I think we need to reel this yeah, back in. I would. You the one thing I would ask. You have an 81-year-old woman a hard time. So you're this is happy to work. You're a disgrace. Okay, stop. Focus, stop now. My pleasure. In the interest of, uh, this is just a suggestion, but is there not? I mean, it seems as though there's got to be some way that you guys could figure out a way to fix this problem. But if not, I mean, obviously we will render a decision one way or the other, but this is not going to solve your problems. Okay. I can tell you that right now. And it seems as though, um, you know, some sort of compromise here, if there can be one, might go a long way toward making uh, she, a She said that she was going to sell her house several times over. I think that makes a lot of sense. She said You're, that all of the neighbors are bad people. I think it makes sense. Okay. You guys are making a lot of sense. Landscaping. Can't you guys do landscaping? We've been planting we trees. Places, yeah. We have tried to mitigate. We've, we've spent a lot of money planting trees to try to block that light. The fact of the matter is to buy tall trees exceeds... No, I'm not talking about putting up a hedgerow. I mean, I just, it seems as though working together, but that's not, that's out of my well, bailiwick. No, I, I just thought I would... Think, I do you think, does it appear to you that we can work together? I mean, I, I called very nicely and said, you know that light i am a the light that i originally complained about was a canister light so it all the light went everywhere up all around and i couldn't even see the stars i could not and i called and andy said who do you think you are and okay, I, okay, okay so you know, just, just yeah we need is it just that light that's going to complain or is it it's, that that it's, it's the floodlights it's also the spotlights the floodlights that are lights. constantly pointed and when but those the aren't police part of came system. over yeah. they pointed them well, down I can reach mine and point mine down too ultimately they too. are because that's floodlights are spoken to in your your the same way uh, street any any secure light floodlights have to be pointed downwards so. <clears throat> 
I'm not sure where we're going to go for here, but I think we're going to, unless there's anything relevant to the actual decision on the floodlight, I mean, on the light, we're going to close the hearing. I have one more thing that I think is relevant, and it's, so when I talked to Green Mountain Power about it, and I asked them if it was my mom's option to have the shield or not, they said, yes, it is. They said, it's up to the neighbor to provide shade for themselves if they don't like the light. <laughs> That's how they left it. It, what's funny about that? There's nothing. Can you move there? Was it like she came? All that big one thing, Susie. When we dis discuss the glare, I mean, that, and that is in the statute what the voters uh, voted for. When you're sitting in the back, it is it's, it's exactly like somebody's flashing a an LED light in your face. So we have to huddle close to the as close as we can to the wall. But if we go any out any further, it's like somebody's like right there. I'm not exaggerating. It's, it's awful. It's really Come see right. for yourself. Please, please, I guys. invite you all. Okay. Okay. Come Susie, see. Oh, I, think Susie, 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 I think we have the picture. I just want to say with the glare. That's all I want to say. I think we have the picture. Yeah. Um, did you have more? I, I have just a question. I guess I should have a Do you um, make a decision without us here and then let us know? Or do you do it? We have to deliver it. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. sense. Okay. Can we also get a copy of the complaints? Is that possible? Yes. Um, um, you give me one sure. Under, give me an email address. So I don't see any additional yes, evidence here, but we need to have a response, please. Um, but I do wonder whether we should do a site visit. Yeah. And, and so if we were going to do that, would we continue the hearing? Well, that's what I got. Yes, according to your administrative procedures, you can suspend and, and go do a site visit. Yeah, maybe we should do that. Just instead of closing the hearing, just, just uh, recess. Uh, then we can deliberate whether we need to have a site visit. People, I don't know what, whether people, the rest of the board feels that way. And then if for some reason as a result of site visit, if we feel like we need to have more evidence, we could ask for more. So wouldn't we have to recess to a date certain though, right? Otherwise you have yeah. to warn it. Yeah. So till next, is, can we do it till the next, we have um, a meeting on the. We do, if you go after that, I guess, if you will. Yeah. yeah. I believe you do have a time, time limit for your decision. Yeah, but if the hearing's recessed, then we don't have, it's not, it's after the hearing's closed. So, but are you also saying that if you go into liberty session and you, you deem that you don't want to go out there, that, um, see, see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, still have to to what? well, we can still, then we can just close we it can on still, the, Yeah, we well, can still go to the date certain and close it. Yeah. I think what you could do is come out of your deliberate session, make a motion to close the hearing, if that's what you, if, if, you know, if, if you, you I, I would suggest you either at, it, at, at the end of the session, you come out and make a motion either to continue it till date certain or close it today. People could go out and wait in their cars if they want to wait till, till, till you come out, of, or we can go over into the town, you guys can go into the town clerk's office and, and deliberate well, deliberate well. You know, I, I think you'd want to come out of it out of your deliberative session. That's fine. I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's. You don't think it's necessary, necessary but. It, it. So, so. So you're going to go deliberate to. So I have a. I, I have a. I'll make a motion that we go into deliberative session. All right. I'll second. Okay. Motion second and approved. Um, any discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. So out of executive session at seven fifty nine. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll make another motion that we re we recess this hearing uh, and plan a site visit uh, after our meeting on August 20th. Second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we will add that to the agenda for next time at the end of the meeting. We'll do a site visit and we will not be taking testimony at the site visit we will simply be observing um, what's there and anyone is welcome to be there but we won't take testimony may i re have a i have a request um you need to see it from my perspective right so you would be coming at my driveway yeah we'll visit your house and visit, yeah. the visit house. their house okay and, yeah. Yeah. and may i also ask that you come when it's sufficiently dark so you can actually see well, the glare meetings at seven o'clock and so you probably be about this time about this time Okay, because when the light first comes on, okay. Yeah, so it, I'm sure it'll be in the dark. Will we get a notification of what it is so we can look to? It's next, it's two weeks from it'll today. Be on the 20th? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say after the 20th. You're going to go on. At, at, the, okay. at the end of the, we have one application that night, so we'll go after the application, so it would probably it'd be about this time. So whose house? I say we go to the Adams house first, so, so Mrs. Okay. Adams could. Yeah, okay. that's fine. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. So then you'll know, yeah. Sure. 
Okay? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sorry that this was a little fumbling. I've never, we've never done it before. Well, you'll be doing a site visit, so perhaps this is not. I'll be happy to keep that in.